Thank you, Philippa. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you for the intro. And I'm so glad you enjoyed the Malt Water Digital Summit. Yeah, that's, <laughs> um, that's awesome. Cool, guys. Well, welcome to today's session on three things brands need to implement in their digital strategies in for the rest of 2020, for 2021 and beyond. Um, my name is Philippa Dodds and I'm the marketing manager at Millwater. Um, sorry, guys, there is my neighbors are doing some drilling, it seems. So just let me know in the chat if you can or can't hear me. All right. And then um, I put my social media links and my email address. Please feel free to get in contact with me at any point. Check out the Millwater website um, and we can continue the conversation further after the session. Perfect. All right. So this is some of what I'm going to be discussing and covering in today's session. So first of all, I'm going to cover briefly the digital landscape and what we need to know about operating in this space. Then I'm going to cover some digital trends to be aware of, um, ranging from social media to mobile and otherwise. Then we're going to look at uh, some of my top tips for creating a digital transformation strategy. So I know that a lot of you are either already operating in the digital space successfully or you're not and you're looking to create a, a transformation strategy that you can implement for your startup or your business or um, organization. And I'm going to be taking you through some of my top tips for doing that. And then we're going to get to what exactly to implement to ensure digital success. So once we've got everything covered and laid out, we're going to make sure that your campaigns and your um, strategies are successful. If you have any questions throughout, um, please let me know just either in the chat or um, feel free to unmute yourself and um, ask, ask me anything or stop me if you need clarification on anything. Right, so first of all, looking at the digital landscape on a global, on a global scale. So the state of digital at the moment um, is really interesting, specifically in terms of its growth. So we have a global population of 7.8 billion people, which is continuously rising and it has a 56% urbanization rate. Of this, 5.1 billion unique, there are 5.1 billion unique mobile users. We have just over four and a half billion internet users and 3.8 billion active social media users. So more than half the world is active on social media. And not only that, but the growth that all of these numbers are seeing is exponential. So from a, on a, on a month to month and on a year to year basis, we're seeing dramatic increases and growth across all of these um, aspects. So within that landscape, let's look at some of the trends that we should be aware of or familiar with at least by now. All right. So mobile, um, you're in the palm of your customer's hand all day. So if I were to ask, you all uh, that are tuning in here now to reach for your phone or to show me something on your mobile, it would probably, you, your mobile would probably already be in your hand. Or if you're like me, um, to reach for it wouldn't even mean fully extending your elbow. It's, it's just so close to you. And this is what we mean by being in the palm of your customer's hand all day. Not only that, but the growth of mobile users globally has far exceeded desktop users as way back as in 2014 and is continuing to grow. The average amount of time that a person spends on their phone per day is 3.7 hours, which sounds like a lot. Um, but actually, I checked my screen time recently and I think I'm on almost double that. <laughs> so we're spending up to three or upwards of three hours a day per, um, per, per day on average. So mobile is the channel and time on, on this device is also increasing year on year by 10% and 35% since the last three years. We're seeing it increase between 16 and 30% uh, year on year up to 2019 and 2 billion gigabytes of um, up to 2 billion gig gigabytes of data on mobile is being exchanged um, on average per region. 
What's also um, in, uh, interesting is that this is also increasing by between 29 and 57 percent. And what's what's really what really strikes me is that the Middle East and Africa is the fastest growing region in terms of mobile data traffic. Not only that, but it's forecasted to keep increasing well into the 2020s up until 2023. So mobile is definitely where we need to be and we need to be optimized on mobile. All right, let's look at these 3.8 billion active social media users. Social media has become known as the heart of all digital customer touch points, and here's why. So social media use over the time is also increasing um, on average 10% year on year. And 98% of people visited a social network or messaging service in the past month. Um, I mean, that is so close to every single person, <laughs> so close to 100%. Um, so this really just shows how prominent social media is in, in actually everyone's lives. When we look at social media channels specifically, we see that, as I'm sure you all know, TikTok has experienced immense popularity with 2 billion downloads. We've seen the launch of Instagram Reels, which is Instagram's take on competing with TikTok. And we see that Facebook, YouTube, and or Facebook and YouTube, two of the biggest social media channels, are in the top two search queries um, on Google. So people are searching for it as well as being active users on it. And more recently, uh, LinkedIn has launched uh, LinkedIn Live. So I think it is now um, every single one of the, the big social media platforms have a live function, which also ties into video, which I'll be touching in, on recently. And this is actually just a screenshot of um, Meltwater's debut LinkedIn Live, um, which we hosted a few weeks ago with the Chief Marketing Officer of Standard Bank. Here we have Gary Vaynerchuk, who if you don't know, I would recommend uh, looking up. And he's speaking at the RD Summit, in which he said, that you need to be podcasting yesterday. He's a huge advocate for it. And this is where, our, where your consumers and where us as consumers are operating. All right, so in between mobile and social um, data and stats and growth, we also have a couple of other um, trends that we're seeing. Of course, it's impossible to cover them all, and I wish I could dive into them all very deeply, but for the sake of time, I will briefly go over voice. So voice search is dominating search engine optimization. Um, so if you have SEO in your comms or marketing plan, this is where you should be focusing. Google says that it was at the beginning of this year that 20% of mobile queries are voice searches. This is going to continue to rise as it becomes an easier and more effective way for consumers to get where um, what, what they're looking for. Then we have video, the most effective means of communicating. I mean, arguably, <laughs> but I think so. Um, and what we're seeing is that, if you can see here, YouTube and video are two queries that are the most searched for queries um, in, in 2018 on Google, respectively. And what that means is that when someone is searching for something, they're more likely to put YouTube at the end of it or video at the end of it. So how to, whatever it is, water a plant, and they're more likely to put video at the end of it and consume video um, communication or consume video means more than text or, or static images. We also see that 92% of our online segment of the global population watch videos online. So another huge uh, percentage. And then in terms of, you know, as marketers and, and comms professionals, 92% um, of marketers say that video makes uh, or has an important role in their marketing strategy. So this is of a huge importance and um, should definitely be something that you're paying attention to if you're not on it already. All right. Um, does anyone have any questions uh, so far or should I keep going? I think you can keep going. I haven't seen any questions yet. Please, if you have questions, please, you can raise your hand or you can put them in the chat section. Perfect. So now I'm going to run through some of my tips for creating uh, your digital strategy. 
Okay, so the first, my first main tip is to be innovative. So this is your time when we're talking about digital and mobile and social media is to be creative, to let your creative juices flow, to think outside of the box um, and to give yourself and your teams space to be creative and innovative. Um, so one of my top tips here is, um, or a yeah, little tip here is that um, what I mean by giving yourself and your team space to be creative is, um, so for me, if I am in a brainstorming session or I'm rushing between meeting and meeting or rushing from call to call, there's very little chance of me thinking of my best ideas then. In fact, I've never had a creative idea when I'm rushing from one thing to the other or in a brainstorm session. When I do have creative ideas and my most innovative thinking happens when I'm, I don't know, on a walk around the block or relaxing and listening to good music or in the shower or whatever it is. So make sure that you are not putting too much pressure on yourself. Like this is the time that we're going to be creative. We're setting this brainstorming session, you know, from one until two on Monday, um, but rather just to let it happen organically and to give yourself the time um, or whatever it is that you need, whether it's walking and thinking and letting your mind wander um, to let that creativity come to you. And this is how you will ensure that you're a front runner in your, in your industry. My second tip is to embrace the internet of things. So it is evident that today um, everyone is online and everything is connected. So remember this when you are creating and innovating. Then I would say to stay on top of trends and it is as easy as it sounds. So keep yourself abreast with what's happening in your industry um, across the digital industry. And then of course you are all um, you know, part of, of different sectors, um, but do keep your, yourself ahead of the trends so that you understand what's happening, whether it be on social media or in the digital space. Um, make sure that you're also upskilling yourself and educating yourself so that you know how to handle these trends and that you know how to act on them. Um, and Malwada has a ton of resources for you to, to do that or to make it easier for you to upskill and, and educate yourself on that. Um, one of them was the digital summit that I mentioned uh, recently and the recordings of that is actually on our website. Um, then it's really important that you are adaptable enough to your, your, the needs of your customers, which are constantly changing. So in this kind of tumultuous um, space that we find ourselves in, right, with COVID and lockdown and um, the world kind of coming to a standstill and now slowly opening up again, there's a lot happening in the digital space. There's also a lot happening where um, to do with our customers and in, in their personal and professional lives. So to make sure that you are keeping up to date with them means making um, your customers the center of your, of your strategy. If you ignore your customers, they'll ignore you. It's as simple as that. And then last but certainly not least, don't underestimate big data. Um, so all the power of it. So data and analytics is going to be your best friend here. And there are a ton of valuable um, insights out there, but not everyone knows how to use them fully. So analytics helps us to understand how our customers behave, what they really think, what makes them tick. And this is going to become invaluable to you when creating these strategies. Okay. <laughs> I've just gone through these. Perfect. Alrighty. Cool. So now we're going to talk about what exactly to implement in your digital strategy. So for our first point, um, I'll start off with this stat that 80% of consumers are more likely to make a purchase from a brand that provides personalized experience. Um, so customers are all for personalization. They want it and they're willing to pay for it. They are also willing to share their information, whether it be personal behavioral information, um, in order to get that personalized experience. So being treated like a name and a human rather than a number um, is super important to consumers today. They also value transparency and authenticity from brands. Um, you know, now more than ever, you know, in this, in this COVID era, um, we have consumers kind of clinging onto or showing even more brand loyalty to brands that they have previously bought into or that they share the values of. Um, so going forward, it's going to be imperative that you make sure that you are as a, as a brand, as a marketer, making sure that you are, um, that 
that valuable and that authentic for them to connect with. So 92% of marketers reported using personalization techniques in their marketing, right? This is a big percentage of marketers. So personalization is obviously on an upward trend, yet over half of them don't feel like they have the sufficient customer data to implement it effectively. Um, and this is, of course, where, uh, where um, Milk Order comes in. 90% of consumers are willing to share their behavioral data if additional benefits are provided that make buying cheaper or easier. So basically, if as a consumer, if you're making my life easier and better um, or cheaper, then I don't mind sharing my personal information with you or behavioral information with you, which I think is so interesting because if you ask a lot of consumers, we might say, well, my personal um, data is my top concern and my, and my number one priority in the digital age where everything's online. Um, but actually it's not, they would, we would actually prefer, well, the data suggests that we would actually prefer a personalized, um, a personalized experience it, um, in exchange for our data. The most um, well-known and probably one of the most successful and effective campaigns of personalization has to be the Share a Coke campaign um, by Coca-Cola. Um, why this was so successful is that it connects the brand with consumers on a personal level. So now uh, customers feel seen, so seen that their name um, is on a Coke bottle, which is you know, one of the most valuable brands in the world. It's a real personal connection with the brand. It was also successful because it encouraged um, user-generated content and social sharing, and it encouraged consumers to create online media content for the brand, so another win. And the campaign has a powerful call to action. Um, in fact, the campaign is called Share a Coke, which is um, you know, a direct uh, call to action or CTA, um, promoting people to buy and share more Coca-Colas. So that is our number one personalization. Then we move on to our next one. And so in this um, screenshot, you'll see that a brand asks, when was the last time you were body shamed and made to feel uncomfortable about your own skin? And what happened exactly? Tell me. And someone says, today I was jogging and someone behind me sniggered how I'm jiggling. That messed my head up, to be honest. I'm trying, that doesn't help. And what happened here is that Dove, uh, Unilever's Dove, put out um, or um, started social listening um, and media, media monitoring to understand what their customers were saying about them and realized very quickly and very sadly that actually 80% of women had experienced body shaming comments before. But after gleaning that insight, Dove launched the Speak Beautiful campaign. And this campaign went on to help increase their sales by 63%. So understanding your market, understanding who you're speaking to and who you're selling to um, is critical when it comes to understanding um, how, to, how to digitally communicate with, with your market. So market research is our second point that we should be implementing in our digital strategies. All right, then we have this... Um, balance act between customer experience and price and product. And what we have, what the data suggests is that customer experience is overtaking price and product as the key brand differentiator. So this means that beforehand where product was um, probably most important or, and, and price and whether you're getting a good price or it's cheaper than your competitors was most important. Now actually customer experience is more important, which means you can have probably spend um, less resources or less um, budget or money on product updates. And you can have a, a more expensive product so that you're not, um, so your, your competitors can still be cheaper than you and you will still be chosen if your customer experience is up to scratch, which is fascinating. It's also been rated as the most exciting business opportunity by marketers, um, in a study conducted by e-consultancy and, and Adobe. And uh, in case you need more uh, reason why you should proactively manage and invest in customer experience, it improves customer satisfaction. So the customers that are using your product or service are happier. 
And that means that they're more likely to stay on, so you're more likely to improve customer retention. They're also more likely to then um, refer you or recommend you or speak highly of you on social media, which of course is where everyone is. And it can improve in upselling and cross-selling or um, the retention and growing of your customer base. How to implement it effectively. So there's a, there's a number of different ways and some of the top ones are to make listening to customers a top priority across the business. So having customers at the center of your strategy. Using this feedback to develop an in-depth understanding of your customers. Having a customer first strategy where you prioritize their feedback and implement it. And it of course boosts personalization and their positive experience with your brand by solving your customers' unique challenges. Um, and that is our third point that you should be implementing in your digital strategy. All right, guys. So that um, actually leads us to our final slide. And um, I'd like to, we have a, a few more minutes if anyone has any questions or comments or would like to share um, if they've been um, if they've been implementing any of these things into their strategies already um, or what they are going to take away from today to implement in the future. Hi, Philippa. Thank you so much for, for this. I, I mean, I've just been taking notes. Please, if you have questions, you want to raise your hand. What I wanted to say, Philippa, was what you said about how you translate the data into personalization. It was one of my key learnings from the digital summit, especially from the, I, I remember it was from the, Marketing director of Coca-Cola, I believe, was there. And it was interesting how they used that data. And it wasn't a one-size-fits-all approach for all of the places they were in. It was very customized. And I thought that that was really great. So my question is, if we don't have a very big budget like Coca-Cola, how do we get these insights? And how do we begin to implement it for our different audience segments to achieve? Because personalization sometimes can be costly. So I wanted mm -hmm. to just know if we don't have a big budget, what we can do in terms of achieving some of the things that you've said. Absolutely. So yes, I of course used, you know, one of the world's biggest examples and I'm, you know, obviously Coke has a much bigger budget than most of us, um, but there is absolutely ways to implement it, personalization and to make it the core of your strategy without spending a lot of money. Um, so I touched on how social listening and social media monitoring, which is obviously what Mill Order offers, um, and, and we have you know, different prices for different budgets and for different companies, depending on what your needs and what your campaigns are. So there's always that option. Um, and then it just starts with yeah, putting your customer at the center of your, of your strategy um, so that you can yeah, listen to them and implement their feedback. Awesome. Hope you guys found that useful. Um, I don't see any questions yet. Some people are commenting on the Dove campaign. It was really good, really, really yeah. good, really resonated, especially we could really relate with that. And that's something that we would also try to incorporate. Okay, so I think we can go on. And if anybody has questions, they would raise their hands and drop a comment. Perfect. And guys, yeah, please um, feel free to reach out if you have questions afterwards or if you don't want to ask them today. Um, yeah, I'm more than happy to also take you through the multi order software so that you can see how it is when we are um, tracking for your brand and you know, tracking for your industry and tracking for your competitors as well. Oh, that's really great. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. Well, then that's a wrap. And thank you guys so much for joining and thank you so much for having me. Um, the session was recorded, so we'll be able to send that out or share it afterwards. So could you also share the slide that has your um, contact details? And also, yes. I think, I'm not sure if you put the link um, to, you had sent a link that had the resources that I thought was really good. So guys, Meltwater website, I, I believe it's meltwater.com forward slash resources. Absolutely yeah. great. You know, we shared it in the community and people were very like, whoa, this is a lot. and. It's great to hear that the recordings from the digital summit is online as well. So please take your time to go through it. Um, okay, somebody is asking if it's possible to get, are you going to send the slides? I can send the slides as well, absolutely. Okay, awesome, awesome. Okay, so Vincent, yes, it's going to get the slides across. Okay, some people are now sending private questions. Guys, please don't send questions <laughs> privately, okay. 
Uh, okay. Yeah, so they ask you, um, mm-hmm. now, could you talk more about how Meltwater helps with digital insights? That how can that tool be used to gain more insight? It's just someone just needs more clarity on that. Okay, perfect. So maybe I didn't, well, actually, I didn't start off with explaining what exactly Meltwater is or does. Yeah. So essentially, we're a media intelligence company and the global leader in media intelligence, in fact. But what that really means is that we are a social and media monitoring or listening uh, service. That means we can track and analyze what is being said about companies online um, in order to provide them with insights to make better business decisions. Um, so for marketing and comms professionals, it's um, you know pretty vital to understand what customers are saying about you, how to be personalized and how to um, stay abreast with digital trends. And that's exactly what we offer. So that's what we offer in our, in our um, software packages and then on our website, obviously, mowater.com forward slash resources for um, if you're interested in, in upskilling and educating yourself and your team um, in the industry. Oh, awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, another question. What's the best approach to interpreting data? To interpreting data? Yes. So yes. when you get these insights, how do you interpret them to yes. take action on them? Yes. Okay. So that's a good question. So what we do is the software like runs crawlers through the internet and searches for everything that is to do with what you're searching for. So it could be your brand name, um, industry, a, a campaign name, a hashtag, competitor, or anything else. And what we do with that data is create um, beautiful little dashboards that have different graphs and different analytics that you can then understand at a glance what is being said about you in terms of could be media mentions, press hits, um, sentiment analysis. Um, so we can dive into all of those analytics and it's, a, it's how it's displayed is very like, easy to understand and you know, beautifully laid out. So it really helps with your reporting and analytics as well to, to your directors or your managers. Awesome. Now we're having more questions. Okay. Uh, Philip, I hope you have more time. Yes. Okay, awesome. So how do you implement a video content strategy for a data conscious nation? And I understand this question because we're still in a part of the world where data is quite expensive and video content consumes more data to create and to watch. So how do you implement that into your strategy? Bearing in mind that a significant portion of the population still struggles to afford data. Yes, absolutely. And a significant portion of, of our population struggles to get onto Wi-Fi. So it's, it's a very valid question. And um, what I'm so excited about it, on that note is the move from, well, not really a move, it's still as important, but you have these YouTube long form videos that can be used as you know tutorials to um, speaking, to engaging with, with customers, to whole episodes um, versus the TikTok and Instagram Reels videos or um, Instagram stories or Facebook stories, which are much shorter, more easily digestible and um, kind of content bites and therefore take up less data. Okay, so what you're saying is that we should just be creative with more shorter form type videos than doing the long form YouTube kind of content. Um, I, I mean, I think both are important, but if you, if I were to choose one, I would choose shorter form because of its easily uh, digestible, easily, easy to consume this kind of content. Um, and it's actually less like resource consuming to put it together. Okay. Got it. All right. So another question, how do you convince <laughs> management of the importance of having a budget for video content strategy? Um, this is after having presentations about how helpful it has been. So um, Ijama works, she works in a law firm, which sometimes it can be quite a cake in their approach. So she's asking, how do you convince management that video content strategy is the way to go? So what I would do is instead of trying to convince them is to maybe just show them the data. You can't argue with that. So show them how video content is growing, how it can help, um, you and your firm specifically think of ideas of video uh, video content campaigns that you could run and um, forecast how this is going to increase your whether it's your brand exposure or revenue that you're looking to um, increase or that will be success for you um, and then at how other companies in your 
um, in your industry are benefiting from it. You said that there have been presentations. Maybe we can chat about this afterwards and I can give you a few tips, but um, well, I'd love to actually see the presentation because if you, yeah, if, if we're using data, if we're using data um, effectively and showing them dashboards with the relevant insights and analytics that we need to prove our point, then um, it should be a no brainer why you should have a budget for, for video content. I hope that yeah, helps. So Ijama, please connect with Philippa and thank you for that, Philippa. Another question. So there are a lot of, you mentioned a lot of trends. There's TikTok, there's Instagram Reels. Sometimes it gets overwhelming. How do you stay on top of everything to just make sure you're not drowning? Do you really have to be on TikTok? Do you, so what, what would you advise for someone that's still struggling to know which of the trends to jump yeah. on and which to just hold back on? Yes. So I would advise um, if you, it depends if you're already full steam ahead in, in digital activities or if this is something that you're looking to enter and you've previously done more kind of traditional or offline media and marketing activities. Um, but I would recommend if you're starting out then to not do them all at once, but rather to get onto you know, a couple of the big social media platforms like Facebook is like a given and should be the first point of contact for you. And then after that, um, extending to um, Instagram, if that's where your customers are, or to TikTok, if that's where your customers are. So things like um, TikTok and Snapchat are generally for Gen Z or like a younger audience. So it depends on what you're selling um, or what you're offering. Um, whereas Facebook is generally for an older audience, but if of course, everyone is on, um, on Facebook and then Instagram is more for, um, you know, the visually aware. And if you have lots of pictures or like a, yeah, like a visually aesthetic um, brand that you would like to promote, then Instagram would be that place. Um, and then of course, YouTube is best for others. So it depends on where you are in the stage of digital and, um, and what your company is offering. But you can absolutely start slow and then add on to it as well. Or we'll start small and then add on to it. Thank you, Philippa. I thought that, that, that was really, really good. And, and so um, do we have any more questions? Because I, I don't want when we leave, there'll be a flood of questions. Although you have said that people can reach you, um, connect with you individually. Yes, absolutely. I want, to, I want to bring you back to the point that you mentioned about podcasting and, and voice search. I've actually found that quite quite interesting and the concern that i now have is if it seems like there's a lot to consume right now since the whole pandemic thing so a lot of webinars a lot of videos a lot of things coming online do you think that adding podcasts to that would be another layer of just adding to what's already there or there's a creative way to go about podcasting to just make a difference because the number of podcasts that have been released in the last few months actually I don't have the data but I know there has been a significant increase yes you're right there has absolutely and I want to make it very clear that if you are if any of you are starting something like starting a YouTube channel or starting a podcast or starting an Instagram page for your brand um, you're not adding to the noise if you're doing it effectively and listening to your customers um, what you are doing is getting in front of people that want to know more about you and your brand. So it's absolutely a beneficial and important thing to do. Um, so start the podcast, um, you know, start the Twitter account, start tweeting, um, connect with your customers and um, the ones that are looking for what you have to offer will, will find you much more easily. There's people out there that want to buy what you're selling. There's people out there that want to hear what you're listening to. So start talking and um, yeah, get online and, and they'll come running. Awesome. So I'm just going to just do a quick summary of my key takeaways. If anybody wants to share their key takeaways, I think Philippa had mentioned what we would want to implement. For me, the biggest is social listening is now more important than ever. So it's not just about creating content and pushing it out. It's about ensuring that this is content that your audience needs and wants. So you're attending to, you're listening to them and you're meeting their needs through your content. And I'm going to be more deliberate about social listening. I actually use Twitter for social listening, interestingly, but I'm going to be more deliberate across all of the platforms to listen better and personalize. And the second thing I'll take away is the personalized experience. So, and the things that I'm doing, I'm going to think 
more creatively about that because I, have, I haven't been doing that. So thank you. Thank you for, for that. Does anybody want to share their key learnings and takeaways before we let Philippa go? I found this really, really very insightful. I'm really grateful, Philippa. I think we're so good. good. Okay, <laughs> awesome. So if anybody wants to connect with Philippa, her log, uh, the login details, her contact details are on the screen and I'll be sending the slides or we'll be sending the slides to everyone. And thank you so much for joining. If this is your first time, this is the Comms Avenue webinar and we do this every week and our goal is that we're a capacity building platform for communications professionals across Africa and even beyond. And we just look for learning and growth opportunities. So aside from the webinars, we have mentoring programs, we have different things, but it's strictly a niche community for communications professionals. So you can follow us on Instagram and LinkedIn.